Hello and welcome to my video today. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a deeper dive into the AI box, specifically the system settings and getting into some of the menus that I haven't shown before. And this will allow you to customize the AI box UI to your liking and to do some interesting things with that regard. So let's get started. First thing we do is start up the car. So here you can see the auto kit page. After a few seconds, this will connect to the AI box. There we go. And this is the default setting that I have, the UI that comes with the CarLink kit ambient or max. And just a brief overview, you have your mapping up top, you have your music in this corner, and you have some shortcuts in this corner. And then previously used apps are down on this bar here. And then you also have the app menu here that you press to get into the apps. So I am gonna press that. Then I'm gonna go into settings. Gonna go into other. And then there's factory settings here. What you're gonna do is enter code 4545 in this box. And this gives you some control over the apps on the device that are already loaded. I'm not gonna mess with any of this. I'm gonna go into the other category. And then there's a lot of different things here you can adjust for the car. Uh, for example, I have the show CPU temperature checked here so that there's a little box here showing the CPU temps. If your CPU runs really high, you may need to take it out of the box that's in the center console and have it out so that it gets some airflow. Or you may be able to use a cell phone cooling unit. Um, I may be doing a video on that in the future that you can add to it if you want to cool it down. I purchased one for around 20 bucks and it drops the temperature easily 20 to 30 degrees Celsius from the normal operating temperature. I don't know. I, I don't think it's totally necessary, but if you do happen to have it during the summer and it gets really hot, that may cause some issues in running the device. So I just want to let you know about that. I haven't really messed around with any of these other features here, such as the screen ratio and the hotspot. I usually leave those on as a default. The delay start connection may be good to have a delay of, I would say, at least 15 to 30 seconds. And what that'll do is the car will start up, then the T-Box will start up and I think it may be uh, smoother by doing that as far as the voltage goes. So I'm going to save that. And then what it'll do is it'll do a restart to take effect. So I'll just give you an example of how that works. So if I press OK, the T-Box ambient will restart. Give it a few seconds and it'll cycle through. And remember, I set it for 30 seconds, so it's going to take some time to restart. And there we go. Now let's go back into those settings again. I'm going to go press settings. Go into other. Factory. 4545. Four, press OK. Go to other. An interesting item on here is the switch between CarPlay and Android Auto right here. It's set currently for Android Auto, but if you want to change it to CarPlay, you would just press this button and then you would be able to use your iOS device with it. It's the same thing as pressing the button on the actual box, 
but you can actually do it in the menu. So it may be more convenient to do it here. And then when you do change it, it will require a reboot of the device and then it will be in the mode for iOS devices when you do that. And then you can always change it back to Android Auto by going into this menu and doing the same thing. So that's a convenient thing for some people to have. Let's see what else we have down here. There's a bunch of country codes. And then when you're done with any of the changes on the screen, you can press the save button and that will bring you out to the main menu again. It'll do a quick reboot. And now we're back into the main menu. I'm going to go into settings again. I'm gonna go into other factory settings. I'm gonna press one, two, one, two, one, two. Press okay. And we have this screen come up and this will allow you to have multiple apps on the screen and you can set them here which ones you want so that if I want to have for example I want to have my power amp on one side and I want to have another thing on this side uh, let's pick something else when I have my ambient light controller on that side. Press save. And now it says touch and hold the widget to move it around the home screen. So I'm gonna add this to home screen. I'm gonna go back into the main menu. Then at the bottom, we have this right here. So I am going to press this button right here. And now I have the ability to bring these up. So let me press that. And now I have my music up top and my controller on the bottom. By the way, this is a app that I have on my phone to control the ambient lighting in my car. I happen to have it connected via Bluetooth to those devices so I can actually control them all at once. I can do that right here. And then I can go and change the colors. So for example, you can see on the sides right here, I have red, but I could turn it blue or any other color I want in here. And that's a handy feature for the ambient lighting. So I don't have to get my phone out to control it. I can do it straight from the car. So that is very convenient to have. So that is one thing. Obviously, I probably wouldn't have this app on up all the time because I don't change the ambient lighting that much, but it is a neat way to show you an example of having two apps running on here and you can adjust the size of each one of these by this middle bar here. So if you scroll this down, you can shrink it, or if you move it this way, so it's all adjustable here, how you wanna have it. So very cool feature. And if you wanna get out of this, all you need to do is press the home button and you're back on the launcher screen. So this may be very convenient if you have two apps that you use all the time and you want to have them always displayed on the screen, you can do that right there and have it as a preset. Let me go back into the menu again. 
Let me pick two other apps here. Uh, let me pick, for example, I want to have Waze up here. And then on this one, I want to have the Music app. Or maybe TuneIn. Let me put TuneIn on this side. And then I will press Save. And then it says touch and hold the widget to move it around on the home screen. I'm going to add to the home screen. Going to exit out of here. And let's see, uh, maybe I take this one off and I want to have a different one. If I scroll down to the bottom, now notice on the bottom of the menu here, I have two different options here for that split screen view. I have the original one I created with the power amp and the ambient lighting, and now I have the new one with the Waze in the TuneIn radio. So if I wanted to, I could put both of these as shortcuts on the screen. So I am going to tap that one, and now I have that one there. So let's press the button right here and bring up both of those apps. We have Waze on top and we have TuneIn on the bottom. And as I showed before, you can adjust the size of the apps here. So if I want the maps to be a little bit bigger, I can do that. So very handy. I, I like this feature and it kind of gives a little bit extra flexibility with this launcher. There are some other launchers that you can download and install on the device. And I've actually done that. And let me show you how that works. You go to the Play Store and you download the launcher that you're interested in. Then you can set it up in the menu. And I have it right here. If I go into settings and I go out of factory here and I go into system, more, go into apps, default apps. Your home app is right here. Home app is your launcher. So if you wanna change that, you can click on that. I happen to have the default is called Quick Step on here, but there's another one that I had downloaded called Vivid and another one called Car Car Launcher. So let me show you what Car Car Launcher looks like. So if I set that to be the default launcher, it will restart with that. And it wants me to do an update. So let me get that update done. So the Car Car Launcher is very similar to the modification that I just showed you on the default launcher, where it has two different apps that you can have on the screen and you can, can't really, you, the difference is with this one, you can't just change the size of them by pressing on the screen itself. There's some settings that you can do to adjust the size. But if you wanna change the apps on here, you can press this button like this and then pick the new app that you want for the top and then you can do the app on the bottom if you wanna change that. So right now I just have it with Google Maps up here and the weather bug down here. You can also set shortcuts on the bottom of the screen. So instead of on the original launcher, the previous apps running listed down here, these are apps that you actually place on the screen and you can have as many as you want. I think you can fit at least a dozen down here. And then if you want to add more, you just hold down the screen here. And then there's all of the buttons here that you can add additional apps. So for example, if I press this and then press application, I can go through and add one that I'd like to have on here. So for example, if I go through this, I am going to add my ambient light, that one is convenient. And what else do we have here? So I guess 
When you're done, you press the done button and it saves it. The launcher has uh, the time down here on the bottom as well as the Wi-Fi. And if you want to go into the app menu, just press this and you have all your apps. You can select from that to run. If I press the button again, it goes back to the default view. If I press this down here again, I'm curious to see what else I have. Oh, okay. If I go into this, uh, press the left button down here, you can adjust the size of the screen for each of the main components. So for example, if I want to change this to 70%, 30%, I can do that. So when I save it, now you can see the screen has changed. So you can change the relative size of the two apps that are running at the same time. You just need to press down on here, go into the other setting, and change that. So very convenient if I go and press that. Let's see. So I'm going to move my button out of here, make it a little easier. So, so if you just need to change that, you just go into the customization and do that and save it. So you can switch back and forth with the little arrow right here. And if you press this button, so you can make this bottom menu disappear. So by unchecking that and pressing done, Notice that the menu on the bottom here with those shortcuts disappears and you can just press it. If you want, you can pull on the bar and get those additional shortcuts if you want to have them disappear during normal use. I kind of like having them there, so I am going to keep that on. So I am going to hold this down and press the button here so that they stay on permanently. So yeah, so more flexibility. If you don't wanna have those shortcuts, you can have them taking up less space by having them disappear and then just bringing them up when you need them. So kind of neat, you can make all these adjustments on the launcher. Well, there we go. I gave a brief intro on doing some more in-depth settings changes for the AI box. I'll have those two codes in the video description if you want to get into that menu. I'll be doing more videos in the future as I find more things out as I explore the systems. And I'll be doing other things that you can add to the AI box to make things easier for your car. If you have any questions or comments or things you want me to do future videos on, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.